So here's the summary of all the formula that you know for the curvature. First, we will begin with the definition. Kappa, the curvature, is defined to be we differentiate the unit tension factor with respect to S. And the S is the r length. And then we take the magnitude of this. So as we can see this right here, it's actually not so useful because when we are given the function, most of the time it is in terms of t, right? So we are going to do this right here for computational work. Kappa is also equal to 1 over the magnitude of the velocity, which is just the speed, and then times the derivative of the unit tension factor with respect to t, and then we take the magnitude of that. Now, that's much better. But you know, sometimes when we have certain situations, of course, there will be certain formulas that we can use. For example, if we are just talking about a curve in a 2D plane, let's say we have a factor function r, and we have the x and also the y components, and this is i hat plus y of t and then j hat. Here, we have a very nice formula for the curvature. This is equal to, we look at x, differentiate that, and then we look at y, differentiate that twice, and then subtract x, second derivative, y, first derivative. So it's not so bad to remember this because there's a nice symmetry. And then we have to divide it by x prime, and then we square this, and we add it with y prime, and then we square that. Then we raise this to the 3 half power. And if you don't want the curvature to be negative, then just apply the absolute value on the top. And notice how the bottom, this is never negative, so we do not need the absolute value around the bottom. And don't worry, I have a video for you guys on the proof of this already. The link will be in the description. Now, when we have a plane curve, if it's our girlfriend, y is equal to f of x. Yes, we also have a very nice formula for that. In fact, we can just use this to get a formula for this by doing a parameterization of this, putting x to be t and y to be f of t. And then you end up with kappa equals f double prime with the absolute value over 1 plus f prime and then square this and then raise this to the 3 half power. In fact, you don't need to use this to prove that. There's another way to do it. I will also have the link to the video in the description. Now, this right here is just a plain curve. What if we have a 3D curve? Well, the following method works for both 2D and 3D. Check this out. Let's say we have r. Next, let's say we have v. And this is just the velocity. And this is just the first derivative of r with respect to t. And right here, we will also need the acceleration, which is just the second derivative of r. Or you can also look at this as the first derivative of v. Now, here we go. Kappa here, it's going to be, what we need first is take the factor v, cross it with factor a. And remember, the result of cross product of two factors is still a factor. But kappa is supposed to be a number. Don't worry, we'll take the magnitude of that result. And then divided by the bottom is the velocity magnitude, and you raise that to the third power. This is 3 half, this is 3 half, why is this 3? Well, the reason is because when we do the magnitude, we have the square root of stuff already, right? And then raise that to the third power, 3 over 2 as the exponent. Now, finally, we have another version like this, if we have a 3D, right? 3D curve. So, r, I will write it as x of t, i plus y of t, j, and then plus z of t, k. Now this is k, and then here is kappa. This formula and that formula is pretty similar, but of course it's going to be longer, and this is how you can remember it. Notice here we have x and y, and then we have x the first derivative times y the second derivative, and then minus x the second derivative and then y the first derivative, right? Right here, we just have to pick two of them and pair them up. 
and then the first derivative and the second derivative, and then subtract it. So I'm going to pair up x and y. So I will have the first derivative times the second derivative minus the second derivative times the first derivative. But here, I'm not going to put down the magnitude or the absolute value because we have two more such pairs. So what we're going to do is we are going to put this to the second power. And later on, we will take the big square root. And the idea is when you take the square root of something square, this is the same as the absolute value. And right here, we only have one thing right here. So we just need the absolute value or the magnitude bars. OK, continue. Next, we are going to pair up x and z. So first derivative, second derivative, minus second derivative, first derivative. Square this, and then one more, y and z. First derivative, second derivative, minus second derivative, first derivative. And then we are going to square this. And then we are going to take the big square root. And then this is all over the denominator. We just need to include the z prime squared. So we will have x prime square that, add it with y prime, and then square that. And then lastly, plus z prime, and then square that. And then the whole denominator raised to the 3 half power. Yes, that's it.